Auzubillahiminashaitanirajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Nabiduhu Nasalli ala Rasulihi al-Kareem. Sisters and brothers in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Brother Bilal Phillips gave us a beautiful overview, and before this, Brother Siraj, about love and how the two success also comes when we have love in our hearts. I'm going to take a, a slightly different approach because of course I'm not a scholar, I am merely uh, a worker who's trying to do some good in this, uh, in this dunya that we find ourselves. I've always found, you know, we, when we are asked what is Islam, why is there so much violence and, and, and our cliche answer is, Islam is not violent, it's peace, right? We all say that. How many times have we actually asked ourselves what does that mean when we say Islam is peace? Is it by just saying I'm a Muslim, I will be at peace, or I will attain peace, or I will be peaceful? Or is there a formula that needs to be applied within Islam? that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, um, it's good. Okay. It doesn't pay to be short. So. For me, Islam gives us a formula for peace, which to me is true success. If you have peace, you are successful in this dunya. If you have peace, inshallah, you are to find Jannah in the hereafter. And the way you find peace in Islam is that you work and you strive for justice. Each and every one of us is commanded in the Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stand up for justice, even if it be against your kid, your kin, the rich or the poor. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in your hearts. And of course, I'm paraphrasing. But the first thing it says is, even if it is against yourself. How many of us know what doing injustice to yourself is? Do we ask the questions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us? Reflect, reflect on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to me, to, in order to have peace, we must be striving for justice. And in order to have justice, we have to remove oppression and persecution. When you remove and you fight and you uh, stand against oppression and persecution, you establish justice. And when you establish justice, that is when you have peace. And this should be the goal and the striving for each and every Muslim and each and every human being, that even if it is against yourself, and the greatest injustice that we do against ourselves, brothers and sisters, is when we do not recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we do not recognize the supremacy of the creator above the creation when we become slaves to what is created rather than to the creator. And so we struggle. You know, so often when I talk to non-Muslims, I ask them, what does peace mean to you? And most of the time the answer is absence of war. In Islam, peace is not the absence of war. Peace is the absence of persecution and oppression and the establishment of justice. If you have oppression in your home, where people are not, uh, uh, family members are not taking care of each other's rights, when there is abuse of any kind, there is oppression. You will not have a peaceful home. If there is a community where there is racism, where there is uh, sexism, where we are oppressing each other, you are not going to have peace in that community. And in a society where there is no justice, when the rich are filthy rich and the poor are dirt poor, when three million children in Canada are sleeping hungry every night, 
when 30,000 women are in shelters every night, when every three minutes a Canadian woman is assaulted, yes, we are not at war, but we are not at peace either. When you have 1,500 Aboriginal women murdered and missing, and we all do not stand up and demand justice, we cannot have peace. So to me, this has become a lifelong struggle, and I'm sure for many of you, is to strive to bring justice, first to our community, to our society, to our country, but, but further on. And for that, we need to have sincerity. If you are just there to perform, people find out very fast. You know, after 9-11, uh, within 48 hours, I had done 72 media interviews, both local, national, international, and I was reaching a point of breakdown. I was doing three to four lectures and, and consultations with, with all mainstream organizations. And at every presentation, I would find one elder from the Aboriginal community attending. Her name was Gladys. And for years, she followed me. Wherever I went to speak, Gladys was there. For a few years, I did not see her. And I was speaking at a palliative care conference, and I saw Gladys in the front row in a wheelchair, and I ran over and I hugged her, and I said, Gladys, where have you been? And she said, you know, how she was not well. Her daughter had just passed away with cancer, and we hugged and we cried. And she says, Shahina, even though I have not been uh, lately at your talks, but I can tell you, I pr say a prayer for you every day. And, I, and she said, you want to know what that prayer is? And I said, yes. And she said, I pray that whoever wishes you harm, may they never succeed. This was not a Muslim. This was an Aboriginal elder. And it brought tears to my eyes to have someone, and this can only happen, brothers and sisters in Canada, in our home here, for her to care so much. Just the other day, our COO, many of my, most of my employees are not Muslims, and we are Islamic social services, but they work there with a passion. I can hardly pay them. One of them said to me, even if you didn't pay me, I would work here. And so they asked me, for 30 years you've been doing this work. Do you see any fruit of it? And I said to them, for a Muslim, all we are asked to do is strive and strive. And we leave the results to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What freedom. I am never asked a question about the results. I will only be asked for my intentions, for my choices and how best I do what I do. Because the results are in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. So if we want success, and I'm sure inshallah we all do, we have to start from the point of that first my life is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ya Allah, whatever you have planned for me, whatever you, you want me to do, which is best for me in this dunya, in this deen, I leave it in your hands. And then we totally and completely rely on that. Because there is nothing else that will sustain us in this life unless we put our lives in Allah's hands. But one thing that's also important here in Canada, especially for Muslims, Canadian Muslims, is to keep an open mind. You know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had such an open mind that he would listen to everyone. If, even if a Bedouin came and snatched his, his collar or, or uh, treated him badly and his companions were ready to take him on, he would stop them and he say, La, let, let him speak. I want to know what is bothering him. The woman would come and they would question and they would argue and he would listen. We are forgetting the art to listen. We are making judgments about people which we have no right to make. We have no right to make judgments about others, whether they are Muslims or whether they are people from other communities because you know what? 
every human being has something to contribute. I have learned so much from, from uh, the indigenous community, from, from my rabbi friends, from my Christian friends. I have learned to appreciate more of, of the beauty of our deen by being open to listening to everyone because the answers are there. And sometimes we don't see the answers till we listen to someone else's perspective and it dawns on us, wow, uh, of course, this is the answer to it. So I always advise people to please leave the judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at every human being, because to me, everything in this universe is a creation from, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I say I love Allah, I work for his pleasure, but I hate his creation? How? I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I do injustice to his creation. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I hide the truth. I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I'm damning everyone to hell. How? How can we face ourselves? when we do that injustice to ourself by, by having that kind of an approach when we get so gung-ho about I am right and everybody else is wrong. How do you show the compassion and mercy of our deen if you don't live it? You know, so many times in my talks, uh, homosexuals come to my talks and, and they ask and they challenge and they question. And in the end, they all have tears in their eyes because I have to show them the mercy of the creator. I cannot judge them. This is not for me. This is my faith says no. I will never gloss over that. But I will never ever judge because you never know what trials you and I will be put through. Right? This is what we have to always remind myself. I remember my grandmother, who's my inspiration and my teacher, always told us, brothers and sisters, she said, never point a finger to anyone. If you have to point a finger, point it this way. Because we all have weaknesses and biases, and we have to look within ourselves to correct them so that when people sit around us, they feel at peace, they feel secure, they don't feel threatened, they feel they can come and they can talk to us about anything without being judged. That's what Muslims are supposed to be. They are supposed to be the sanctuary, the oasis in the desert of this life, that when people see, they say, I see life, I see hope, I see mercy, I see compassion, I see rahma, I see forgiveness. This is how we strive and this is how we bring success. Because Prophet Muhammad said, the best among you is one to whom the best comes to humanity. He didn't say Muslims. It really bothers me when I see this siloed, limited mentality I remember one indigenous um, brother was staying with us. He had come from states to speak at one of our conferences. He had converted to Islam. And as we were sitting and discussing, he said, you know, sister, I will never forgive the Muslims who came to the United States before me. And I said, why, brother? He said, because they kept the deen to themselves. We are not owners of this deen. We are not owners of the sunnah of the person sent as rahmatullah alameen, not rahmatullah muslimin. Why are we so stingy? Why are we so afraid? Why are we not being generous in how we treat people as they should be treated because they are a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom we claim to love? whom we claim to worship, whom we claim we submit to, is this submission with ifs and buts. I will be nice to so-and-so because I agree with them, but not with so-and-so 
because they are out of my race or out of my ethnicity or out of my madhab, you name it, right? The ifs and the buts cannot go hand in hand with surrender to the one and only merciful creator. So I want to leave some uh, time for questions. Uh, as Brother Bilal, we need to learn from him. We are fortunate to have so many scholars in our midst who can guide us and give us. Um, so I would just say to you in the end, that please when you see an injustice, no matter who it is against, even if it is against the environment, against the animal kingdom, against the humanity, speak up. Do something about it. You will be questioned on the day of judgment for it. And if you want success and if you want peace, make striving for justice your aim and objective no matter what you do what your vocation, what your role in your family or in your community. You know, work with selflessness, not with selfishness. So many good intentions, but so much little self-awareness. So many of us don't even, and myself included, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us to be born in this faith. Just that blessing alone, brothers and sisters, should compel us to spend every moment of our life to bring relief to this humanity. Thank you.